What happens when you combine a weenie DM with a player that is just intolerable? You get stories like this. This is an absolute cluster heck, but I want to thank today's sponsor for making this happen. Seriously, I would not have the strength to churn this one out if not for these guys. Does the name Legend of Keepers mean anything to you? Inspired by the video game of the same name by Goblin Studio, Legend of Keepers is a collection of dungeons crafted in 5e mechanics featuring a vast collection of heroes and monsters. Legend of Keepers is a 5e compatible series of four unique reverse dungeon adventures. It takes the video game style of a monster-driven company defending its net worth from those pesky adventurers and adds a full 5e compatible gaming experience in which players can decide if they want to play each dungeon as the righteous heroes or enterprising monsters. You can even take your whole party, split it into two teams, and compete against each other. The campaign features an incredible array of printable minis that can be placed in 3D printable dungeons. Each dungeon is a unique setting within the Legend of Keepers world, but can be easily relocated to any fantasy setting the DM desires. Legend of Keepers is designed for customization with replayability at its heart. So what are you waiting for? Go check out the link in the description. See you there. That said, roll post. Forever DM first time playing a character in over two years, ruined by a player with no depth, all edge. I'm a forever DM. I started DMing for a group of friends in 2015 because of my background in improv, and theater seemed to be best suited for the group, as none of us had any real D&D experience. I had played a single game of Pathfinder some years before, and all of us were relatively new. I found that I loved DMing a great deal and quickly started DMing two other groups, but also playing as a PC in another group. The group that I was playing in ended. That is a horror story for another time, leaving me playerless. Yeah, that's about what it's like to be a forever DM. That's the struggle of being a forever DM. You have to be the party's manager, but you also have to be the villains, the entire planet, co-write the characters' pasts, and also design the world's future. That's why these horror stories that involve a forever DM hit so close to me. I'm a forever DM myself, so I get it. Doing all of the above mentioned work to get the game going, only for it to end in a horror story through no fault of your own, it's just one of these players causing issues, it really actually sucks. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Luckily, I'm sure nothing in this video will be horror at all. We're here to laugh and have a good relaxing time. So yeah, roll post. Two years later, still DMing two groups, but playing in none. I decided to look for a group to play a player character in. A Facebook group for tabletop role-playing games in my local area had a post from a new guy in the area wanting to DM a group. So I quickly volunteered to play. I decided pretty early on that I wanted to play a half-orc bard inspired by Klingon culture, looking mostly for glory and honor, primarily as a way to write a song or an epic poem. To this end, I took spells that reflected his storytelling nature, like Silent Image, as I imagined he would summon the image to act out his and others' glorious moments in battle. Session Zero comes and we meet at our local game store. The DM introduces the setting and we begin discussing the characters we want to play. The players are as follows. Ranger, okay. Rogue, normal. Artificer, nice. Myself, and Edge McEdgerton. Edge decries me playing a bard because half-orcs make better barbarians and decides that he himself will play a bard. We go around the table and kind of explain our characters a bit and all of us are some form of neutral until we get to Edge himself. I'm chaotic evil, he says with a smile. Nope, alright, pull the brakes. In 99% of game scenarios, playing a chaotic evil character is completely unfeasible long term, especially if nobody else in the party fits the description. You're playing an evil campaign? Sure, okay, fine, that's permissible. But that's not the bead I'm getting from this story. 
The problem with solo evil characters in these campaigns is that their goals are most likely completely opposed to the rest of the party. They can be united in taking out a bigger threat, but at the end of the day, their ideologies make it so that they cannot agree on anything that has substance. Now, you might be thinking that this can, and sometimes is, a cool character dynamic. You would be correct. People who by all means should hate each other have to work together. That, however, is a really cool character trait in movies, way harder to do in a D&D game. It takes skill and separating the player from the character, and that, unfortunately, is not super common in a casual gaming setting. Anyways, roll post. Honestly, this should have been the first red flag, full disclosure. I typically ban evil alignments in my games to avoid situations like what will soon happen. Unless the players can explain how they'll maintain a group of adventurers whilst being evil. I usually trust my players to know what they're doing, and they don't often let me down. So I decided I would not immediately question Edge's decision to play evil. It would be an interesting dynamic. We get our first quest and at some point go examine the Scarlet Citadel. But in the meantime, we explore the city. We went to the job board and it had three jobs. One, escort a noble. Two, find a missing child. And three, collect pelts for the tanner. Me, we should search for the child. Edge, missing child? Who cares? Escort quests are boring. I want to find the pelts so I can kill things. Everyone else is like, uh, sure? We don't care, we just want money. Shortly thereafter, we came across a woman looking for her farrier supplies. Rogue, hmm, I'll jump into the haystack to search for the supplies. Edge, so does this woman look more like Jessica Alba or like Rebel Wilson? DM says, what? You know, is she like super hot or what? Is she ugly? What does she look like? She's middle-aged, broad-shouldered, and looks like she works outside with horses. Ugh, pass. Dude, okay, first we have the main problem. This seems to be a complete lack of self-awareness. If anything seems like a fun idea in that very second, just do it. I don't think this guy even had a plan for playing Chaotic Evil, other than using it as an excuse to do whatever he wants. Unfortunately, even that is a butchering of how chaotic evil should be played. I respect evil characters' writing. I think they can be some of the most interesting characters. What I don't like is when people immediately conflate evil with just being able to do whatever they want in-game without consequence just because, uh, hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm evil. I get it? Because cause, cause I'm a psychopath? Anyways, roll post. DM. Uh, so, um, Rogue, you don't find the supplies, but you do find a set of footprints leading into the woods. They look to be those of a Hoogan, Ravenfolk. Hell yes, we'll kill them for you. Me, maybe if they put up a fight. Edgelord, nah, we'll kill them, no worries. Finally, we follow the tracks into the woods and to a clearing. There we see the Hoogan using the farrier tools on a centaur with another centaur watching. The DM has us roll initiative for a surprise round. I roll a 19 and go first. I walk to the edge of the clearing and ask if I could do an insight or perception check to see if they seem overtly hostile. DM, they have weapons but don't seem to have any markings of any battle organizations in the area, and their conversation seems to indicate that the centaur was desperate for this service. Me, in a whisper. They don't seem hostile. We can negotiate. DM. That's your turn. Edge, you're up. I shoot the centaur with my longbow. Crits. 20 damage and the centaur is dead. Other guys go and nearly kill the Hoogan as well. Top of the round, my turn. I walk into the open and say, Look at your dead friend. Drop the stuff and flee. You will not win. Then, bonus action, healing word the Hoogan. They leave. Edge, points bow at me. Why are you healing our enemy? They are not our enemy. You stopped us from getting two pelts. We'll have to do with one. I hope you're happy. Wait, what? You're going to skin the centaur? Yeah, why not? 
That's a person. Not anymore. Not, nah, you're not going to skin the centaur. Artificer, he has a point, who will know? We will, and it's not going to happen. DM, it is possible to tell the difference between a horse and a centaur. Any skilled tanner will know where this came from. That's stupid. So, the DM calls the game at that point, and I look at Edge, and I tell him, my character is not going to get along with yours. And he responds with, yeah, most goody two-shoes don't, but that's your problem, not mine. He gathers his stuff and leaves. I spoke with my players afterwards, and they were all appalled. I messaged the DM the next day and explained that I was not going to be back, because while I enjoyed the opportunity to play a PC, it was not worth dealing with Edge. He understood, but said that he's not here to stop people from playing the characters they want to play. And that was that. Well, no, that's not how you're supposed to DM. You're absolutely supposed to stop people from playing characters that are not conducive to a well-running game. That should be obvious. The DM has a huge responsibility on his shoulders, and this reads as him trying to offload it onto the players as if they are somehow responsible for the game failing. Which, simply, obviously, is not true. We just went over all the DM's responsibilities earlier. The DM has to be a leader and pull the group together. If someone is so obviously a bad actor in-game, they deserve the boot. Anyways, let's wrap this up. The story is not much longer. Roll post. I hope that the game continues and that they all have fun but I will retreat back to my games where players are respectful and understand the joint storytelling that D&D &D lets people share. TLDR, joined a game as a PC for the first time in two years. Edgelord plays a chaotic stupid while making incredibly problematic comments about women and not playing in a way that's conducive to a group. Yeah, that's about right. This is what happens when annoying player meets weenie DM who is too afraid to take a firm stance on problem players. I don't want to blame the DM too hard, as it is true that it was the edgelord that was causing issues. But still, the DM is the one person who has the power to just shut it down, and he chooses not to. He just rejects the responsibility we were talking about earlier. Anyways, if you have any RPG horror stories, please do send them in my subreddit. I check on them all the time. Till next time.